Good morning. Would a holy God have mercy on a nation of idolaters? Our reading is at Jeremiah 48, verses 40 to 47. For thus says the Lord, Behold, one shall fly like an eagle and spread his wings over Moab. Kiriath is taken and the strongholds are surprised. The mighty men's hearts in Moab on that day shall be like the heart of a woman in birth pangs. And Moab shall be destroyed as a people because he exalted himself against the Lord. Fear in the pit and the snare shall be upon you, O inhabitant of Moab, says the Lord. He who flees from the fear shall fall into the pit, and he who gets out of the pit shall be caught in the snare. For upon Moab and upon it I will bring the year of their punishment, says the Lord. Those who fled stood under the shadow of Heshbon because of exhaustion. But a fire shall come out of Heshbon, a flame from the midst of Sihon, and shall devour the brow of Moab, and the crown of the head of the sons of Tumult. Woe to you, O Moab, the people of Chemosh perish, for your sons have been taken captive and your daughters captive. Yet I will bring back the captives of Moab in the latter days, says the Lord. Thus far is the judgment of Moab. So in due course, Babylon carried away most of the Moabites. Like their Hebrew neighbors, they too went into Babylonian exile. Their existence as a people practically ceased at about that time. They really never came back in a strong way. But in our text here, God promises to bring them back. That's kind of interesting. Is there a problem here? God makes different kinds of promises. Sometimes his promises are statements of his sovereign will. This is what I'm going to do, and uh, this really isn't on the table. It's just what I'm going to do. But most of his statements to humans are about humans. And what he will do is linked with what we will do. So then those promisings and threatenings are conditional. He's inviting us, pleading with our hearts. He's sending his angels. He wants to impress our hearts, but he doesn't take away our will or our choice. He was always seeking the hearts of the Hebrews, the Moabites, the Babylonians, the Egyptians. He's always helping us to return to him if we will, but friend, but only if we will. He's always seeking for hearts who can give themselves to him. Some men think that the Hebrews were his favorites and he was indifferent to the Moabites. I don't think so. Rather, what he did was he chose the least of all peoples. He chose the Hebrews to show what he can do for all men. He gave the Hebrews a lot, not only in blessing, but in responsibilities. They were supposed to share his blessings. Usually they miserably failed. We can admit that. But then there are many occasions where we see goodness and mercy expressed in the actions of the heathen, like, for example, the Good Samaritan. And here in our prophecy today, God makes promises. God makes promises to every Moabite who would turn to him as far as he knew how. God would in due course bring them back to their homeland if they would turn to him. Friend, this is the God that we all serve. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, it's not just a slogan. You are a merciful God. We recognize that in the way you've interacted with your people. Help us, Lord, also to be reflectors, echoers, Lord, of your mercy. Help us to be merciful toward our friends and loved ones. Help us to be merciful toward others, uh, even your enemies. Lord, please be generous to us by helping us express mercy to others. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord, that we may be a little bit more like you in that category. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. So what's the answer? Well, the answer is yes. The one and only true and holy God, he would have mercy even on these half-blind idolaters. Yes, he would. If only they'll open their hearts to him. If only you and I will open our hearts to him, we'll experience his mercy too. Men aren't saved by perfect knowledge, but by willingness to open their hearts to him. Oh, may someone be crossing your pathway today and may their heart be open to the Lord Jesus. Maybe through your actions or even your words. Have a wonderful day in the kingdom.